to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everybody, so quite a literal few of you have asked me to look into peptide storage. What environmental setting is best for lyophilized powder? And after reconstitution, do your peptide products have to be stored in the fridge, at room temperature, or in a vault under the sea? All great questions, and I think it's worth addressing the topic once and for all. So let's say a hypothetical person stumbles upon a vial of research-grade peptide that was legitimately and safely compounded. It's now present as a powder. This is the product that'll be mixed with reconstitution solution to create the injectable peptide solution. And I think before we address my own ideas, let's look at what the FDA says about it in the peptides that are actually clinically approved and prescribed to people. So tessamorelin, as we know, is a treatment modality for those suffering from HIV-related lipodystrophy. Now, the product, for the most part, uses a single-dose vial, as in it's reconstituted, used immediately after, and then discarded. But recommendations for compound storage are up to 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius, which even the most frugal air conditioner users can easily adhere to. The same also goes for Vilesi, the FDA-branded product of PT-141 or bromelanotide. The recommendation for the Ozempic pen is to refrigerate until first use, then either at room temp or in the fridge for up to 56 days after. It's also recommended to refrigerate Zepbound or Trizepatide. However, the pen can survive room temperature up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit for three weeks. So what can we generalize from these different FDA-approved prescriber guidelines? It's that, in the short term at least, mixed peptide products seem to withstand some heat for at least a couple weeks. In the long term, however, this may not be applicable for someone who plans to essentially hoard peptide powder in an apocalypse vault of sorts for years to come. But really, what someone gets if ordering a research peptide is a lyophilized powder, this is crafted in a process that's pretty much freeze-drying, in which water is removed after the compound is frozen, which makes handling the product easier in addition to enhancing the product's stability. And given the augmented stability that comes with such a process, it makes storage much less of a hassle or concern, which is therein one of its greatest purposes. However, in order to answer the questions we all want to know the answer to, myself included, it's probably best to work backwards by answering another question first. That is, what would decrease the stability of lyophilized product? The answer is moisture, or meltback, which is a process in which liquid, which the compound was made devoid of, begins seeping back in, rehydrating it, thereby decreasing the stability of the product and making it more prone to degradation. That's why if you have peptide powder that you plan to use months or years out, the recommendation is to freeze it, to continue a low moisture environment while minimizing light and external heat sources, and hopefully maintaining stability of the freeze-dried product. However, if someone plans on using a powder shortly after getting their hands on it, let's say a few weeks to a month, it's fine to store at room temperature in a darker area or in the fridge. With such a short time frame to use, it likely doesn't matter either way. After reconstituting your peptides or mixing it with the water-based solution, then the recommendation is to place the solution into the fridge where it'll remain stable for likely a week to a month. And since most of these products don't come with over 5 milligrams of solute to mix, this will likely be a non-issue as well. So in a nutshell, you have powder and you're going to use it soon. Fridge or cabinet to provide cool and dry storage. You have powder that you're going to use in a couple months to a year place in the freezer. You've mixed your reconstituted solution. Put it in the fridge. All of this while using common sense and avoiding external sources that could reduce the stability of or contaminate the product. Think light, heat, and I wouldn't personally recommend storing it inside a jar of mayonnaise, for instance. But in all seriousness, safe and sterile handling practices are always good form and to be encouraged. So as always, I'll link all the pertinent and used sources in the description below. There's also a video I made some time go on reconstituting peptides, which I'll place in the description as well. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you do like this evidence-based peptide content. It's the best and only way to help a small peptide YouTuber like me out. However, if you're looking for a further way to support the channel, if you want to be one of the crazy few involved, the link to the Patreon will be below too. We've got more content on there, all videos are subscriber requested, and it's just a fun way to communicate with everybody. Regardless, and most importantly, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.
Cut to the chase, evidence-based Pull up a chair, let's get this straight Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy <laughs>